Hey, everybody. Welcome to module number two for our branding mastermind. Thank you for hopping on. We're going to be watching the recording in just a few minutes, but I wanted to have some discussion around our homework. And like I said, I hope you took some time because it was meaty, right? It was really meaty. And this is the second time I've done it. And I've been in a coaching course and doing all sorts of mindset work, and it was still meaty for me, and it took time. So let's dig in, and I want to hear what were some of the things that you realized? Tell me what you learned, and I'm going to mute everybody, and then you can unmute. Did anybody have an aha moment about their thoughts regarding the products? Let's start there. I did. I'll go. So I had the opportunity to do this course two years ago and I had dropped that in the chat and Michelle will just tell you it was a lot for me. I was a little extra for her, <laughs> but when I went back through this today, um, I felt a real, you know, pat on my back because I, today I referenced it to like, I pulled out my stuff from two years ago, um, to compare what I had been doing this week. And I was really proud of myself because two years ago, what I found was, um, you know, if someone had been on their products for a few months and then turn their sub off or said it wasn't working. It created a lot of feelings for me, a lot of emotion. Um, and I think for several reasons, but because my product belief was not where it is right now. And I gave myself a nine in this category because I always feel like there's room to build belief. But my product belief now is so rock solid, not only from my own testimony, my family, my happy product users, but I literally had someone reach out last week um, and say that the products weren't helping her. And I was like, oh, well, so of course I went into like question mode, right? Asked all the questions and she had all the right answers. And I was like, hmm. And I literally went back to her and said, you know, if you're doing X, Y, and Z, I am really curious why this isn't working. I find this to be very odd. And, you know, I'm so sorry. I haven't been able to help you with the goals that you're looking for. But if you want to revisit this in the future, just know I'm always here. Guys, one of the questions I asked was, are you taking two ProBio 5 every single day? Y'all, I went back and looked at her sub. She'd not ordered ProBio 5 since August, but yet told me she was taking her products every single day, just like I had asked. So it just reconfirmed to me, like our products work when things are done correctly. So it was just great to see like in the area of product belief. Yes, I love that. Well, let's talk about what are some things that we can do. And I love that, Leah. Um, I love how you've grown in your confidence. Um, and I'm so proud of you for digging into the hard work friend. Um, what are some things, um, that you can do that we can do to build our belief in the products? Because if we don't have rock solid belief in the products, then we're not going to be talking about the opportunity, right? And here's the thing we can be building. It's very much a learn while you earn type business. So we can be building this as we're moving forward, but what are some things that we can be doing to build our belief? So I know one of the things I like to do is um, I'll watch videos like Jessica Hogan Dorn because um, she does great videos on products, um, Immune Plus, especially ones that I don't know a whole lot about. Yeah. Um, and what I do is actually go back and make notes on it because for me, I have to listen over and over again really to retain. But um, that's one of the things I do. Yeah, I love that. 
Um, and Deirdre put in a post in our team page, if you guys haven't seen it, a whole list of Jessica videos. It is a wealth of information. So you could literally just go through those videos and educate yourself. It is a fabulous resource. Absolutely. So here's the thing. You need to take ownership of building your belief. And you need to take ownership of building your belief in all of these areas. Can I tell you one of the most encouraging things that I realized, and I'm kind of skipping ahead in this, but over and over again, the question was, if your belief was 100% in this, how would you be showing up? What would you be doing? And you know what I realized? Dang. I'm like 98% belief because I'm still growing. I've invested in a coaching class. And why did I invest in the coaching class? Because I want to be the best that I can be so I can help you be the best that you can be. Because my belief is so stinking high that I want to do everything in my power to show up the best, to help you be the best so that you can help your people be the best. Because I know where I want to go and I know where we can go, but it's a matter of growth to get there because I know it's real. Do, do you see how it's cyclical? If you believe you're going to grow because it's like, if you believe that broccoli is good for you, you're going to take it. You're going to eat it. If you believe that ProBio5 can help you, you're going to take it. If you believe that this opportunity is life-changing, you're going to talk about it. So it is so important to grow. And let me just tell all of you, the fact that you're digging in and doing the homework shows me that your belief is higher than 50%. Okay. I don't know where it is for you, but I want to say your belief can, is higher than you probably think it is. So let me ask you this, both of these, let's talk about the opportunity now. Like some of these questions were kind of in your face, right? Like, how would you be showing up? Do you believe that you're the best person that can lead people? I mean, two years ago, when I read that question, I was like, oh, oh, no, Brittany's a much better person to lead these people. Christine is a much better person to lead these people. And now I'm thinking, I mean, this was a little bit of a gut check for me too this time. And here I am leading this whole team. I thought, you know what? I am. And that doesn't mean, here's the thing I want you to catch. It's kind of like when the Roman soldier went to Jesus and he said, I believe, help my unbelief. Questioning doesn't mean you don't believe. Like lack of belief is a decision. I'm not going to believe this. So you can still question and have belief. Are you guys tracking with me? Like you can still have that gut punch of, oh, I don't, I'm kind of nervous. You can still be nervous and believe that you're the best person to do it. Why? Why are you the best person to do it? Because God has planned these things out for you, for you to walk in. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. He has prepared these things for you ahead of time for you to walk in. So it's that duality. So let's talk about the opportunity a little bit. What did you guys realize? If you had 100% belief, let's talk about it this way. If you had 100% belief in this opportunity, how would you be showing up? For me, I said I would be casting a lot more vision because I would see clearly what exactly is possible for people as they join my team um, it goes even more through the roof yes can you hear me yes okay i had to call in because my wi-fi is so bad <laughs> um i had one similar to what madison was saying casting more crazy vision, <laughs> like crazy, like meaning just like crazy sharing with everybody. I think I was thinking higher caliber, higher leadership lid, mm -hmm. like people with a higher lid, people that are like, Oh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like maybe some people don't know if they have those people, but if we did, 
we would not hold back. So it's like, um, it made me check. I feel like I have gained really high belief, especially compared to last year. Um, but there's still room to grow and it's, and a little bit more on this side only because of just still growing. I mean, still have room to grow a lot more, I think in my leadership lid, but it's so much harder than it was, but uh, that was the thing I was like, Oh gosh, not holding back at all. Like where I could see that there's been times where I've done that with people, um, uh, maybe in person more for me, I might hold back more in person or, somebody I know more, or if you have in your mind already made up, you think that, oh, they wouldn't want to do this. That's where, not that the opportunity is not amazing. I feel like I'm all in about that, but like with thinking I should share it with everybody. Does that make sense? Like, and I was realizing for me, I need to be better in that area with um, not prejudging it, where they're at like in holding back because we think we've already made our mind up for the person that they they're too busy they're too this they're too successful they don't need the money all these little things and we need to believe that this is something that could change their life no matter their state or what they're doing and let them make that decision yes I love every bit of that Angela that's exactly right from recruiting up to you know not prejudging 100%, 100%. I mean, Brittany says this about me. She said, you know, some people looked at me and thought I wouldn't have wanted or needed an opportunity. My husband's got a great job. We have a beautiful home, blah, blah, blah. And yet I desperately was hungry for more. Um, and some people, you don't know what their pain point is. It could be just a community of women. It could be working out of a place of purpose. It could be um, and listen, our community is something incredibly powerful. People, most people don't work with people that they love and we desperately love each other and lift each other up, you know? So I love everything about what you just said. Um, yes. Let me ask this because I want to save enough time for our training. What did you all see or write down for the beliefs that you would need to think. How did she say it in the um, homework? You know, what thoughts do I need to intentionally, what thoughts do I need to think intentionally to bring my belief up regardless of the area? I think for me, I can, I can speak on that. Um, like I said, I agreed with what Angela was saying on the last one. I just wanted to comment on that too. It's like, I believe in the, in the business. Why don't I share then? It's, it's because it turns around to belief of, can I lead that person well? Cause like, like if I see somebody that's like a real estate agent or somebody that I feel like is like super powerful, knows a ton of people, they're just a leader. Then it's not that I don't believe that this company is good for them it or that they would see it as valuable. It's that okay, if they said yes, then what would I do with them? It's that me yeah. making sure that I could lead them well. So I know all of mine stems back to me believing in myself and my ability to lead them. And that just comes down to because of my struggle of getting my systems ready. So like in my mind, I'm like, I need to get my system, you know, get organized and then I can talk to those people. See, so I figure those things out. But to answer that one, I just wrote down on all of these, like the Lord has called me to this business. The Lord has called me to diamond. Therefore, he's given me all that I need to accomplish all of which he's called me to do where he guides, he provides. So it's like, what thoughts do I need to be intentional? What do I need to be believing in order to get right to believe, to build the belief? I need to believe that I've been called to do this and that he's equipped me to do it. As that's far right. as building my personal belief. That's um, right. And then just doing the work of growing my leadership lid, you know, reading. Well, that's the book. just it. Yeah. I love everything you just said, Melanie. And that's just it. Because here's the deal. Um, the more you grow yourself into the person that people want to follow systems, it's not a matter of systems. People want, people will follow you if they buy into you. It's the law of buy-in. I mean, I am married to a man who's so organized, it makes me shudder. I'm not. Ask Leah. She can attest to that. But 
people have bought into me. Do you see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying yeah. that in a prideful oh, way. So I? the more you grow your leadership, yes, we need systems. Yes, all of those things. But the more you do this work in terms of your belief, growing into the leader that God's called you to be, knowing that God has called these people to you, digging in. And, and the best way for you to do that is two things. And, and I think it's so neat that we've got both of these things going on at the same time. This class... And then Brittany's podcast, it's like two sides of the same coin, because the more that we grow and see how God is molding us and shaping us, um, and we're really learning to live out of who God's created us to be. It's all about who we are in, in the Lord, mm-hmm. because as we come into that identity, because purpose stems out of identity and identity stems out of relationship, we can move forward in confidence Mm-hmm. knowing who we are in him, exactly what you just said, because it's law of buy-in. 100. Can, I, can I ask a question on that? Just, and it's basically um, like for me in the systems thing, I think what happens is, um, is that I feel like with the team that I already have mm-hmm. is that maybe I'm not serving my team. Well, I'm not leading them well, because I'm not solid in my systems. In other words, I don't want to oversell people, right? Cause they buy into me and my passion. So I oversell them and then under deliver. See what I mean? Sure. So that's what I feel like has been a fear that's kind of kept me back is that I'm like, Oh, I cannot keep, cause I can cast all the vision and be all passionate and get everybody on board. And then I get them on board. And then I, I don't follow through, like, right. you know what I mean? Because I, I don't have things in place. And so then I get afraid to bring more people on because I haven't done well with the ones that I had. Sure. So this is a very interesting scenario and there's a lot of thought models going on here. So, um, and on a side note, I want you all to know that between the end of January and February, we are going to be talking a lot about onboarding and systems and making things very crystal clear um, because here's the reality. Everybody has available to them the same resources. And if we can point people to the resources, they can gain what they need. Okay. So, but this is a thought model that I want you to, um, We'll do this thought model and then we'll probably move forward. This is a perfect example. And there was examples of thought models. I hope you guys all took time to do these thought models because one of, um, and this goes back to part of the homework too, what is in my control and what is not in my control, right? Like you can have the most amazing systems in the world, Melanie. And that doesn't mean that anybody on your team is going to create systems or use systems or anything. So everything, one of the best things I've been learning from this coaching class I've been doing is everything that we do is either to create or avoid a feeling. Mm -hmm. And this was so interesting to me. One of the things that's been a, I messaged Jessica because as I was doing my year end review with Brittany, I was kind of thinking through um, possible hindrances. And I said, one thing that has been a theme is a lack of focus. Like I will know the most important things to do, but then I'll get distracted by answering messages or, you know, helping this person or doing this, doing that. I get very, you know, lack of focus. And she said, well, where does that come from? I said, I don't know. I don't know where this lack of what's the root, she said. So then I asked Jessica, I'm like, where, I don't know what the root is. Like, do I, and where do I, do I go digging for that root? Or is this a mindset where I just change my thought? Okay. So two things here. Do I just change my thought, take myself through a creation cycle, a thought model, or is there something I need to uncover? Okay. So I'm, I asked this question today on my coaching call and Jessica says, okay, tell me, why aren't you focused? And I say, well, there's all these things I need to take care of. And there's all these, all these plates spinning. There's new business builders, there's messages, there's dough. And let's take my dough. There's so many people in dough. It can be overwhelming. And then, you know, I put it off or this or that, or the other thing. And basically what she helped me realize is my issue isn't focus. My issue is that I'm avoiding a feeling. 
So I know because I know what to do. But what I'm doing is I'm taking myself away from the most important things because that task feels overwhelming to me. So I change my energy and my focus so I don't have to face my overwhelming feelings. Everything you do is to create or avoid a feeling. So what I realized is, oh, and so she said, well, how do you want to feel about your tasks? Like just take dough, for example. Well, I want to feel expectant. I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel like uh, I'm stewarding this well because I know this is part of my purpose and my destiny because people, God has people for me to reach. And she said, okay, well, what if you thought that going into dough instead of feeling overwhelmed? How would you show up differently? And it radically changed things for me because truth be told, I can be like a freaking pit bull focused if I want to be, pardon my French. So I'm really not, I've just created so much drama for myself around these issues because I was simply trying to avoid a feeling of it being too much for me. But when I changed the thought around that, it changed the feeling because feelings come from thoughts. So what if instead of thinking, I don't have systems, no one's going to, which is overwhelming because we've talked about this before, Melanie, right? It's overwhelming. You know, what, when you think of creating systems, what's the feeling that comes up? Um, impossible. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like, it's just like, ah, I've tried this a hundred times and every time, every day I try it and then I fail. I'm like, okay, Okay, I'm like, I don't want to fail again. Okay. Stop. So fail. Those are thoughts, but the feeling is overwhelm, stress. Okay. So how, when you think about creating your systems, how do you want to feel? Because for me, when I thought about go, it was like purpose, expectancy. I'm stewarding these things well. I want to feel like an overcomer. Like I want to feel like, okay, I finally got this thing. (laughs) I don't like that it's beating me. Or you know what I mean? Or that I'm allowing it to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, which I do praise the Lord, have a plan. And I'm feeling like the Lord is already, I've been fasting, you know, I did the the reset fast and now I'm doing the 40 day sugar fast. And I just feel like the Lord is real. I'm expecting breakthroughs. I'm expecting instruction from the Lord. Right. Let, let me hone in. How yeah. do you want to feel? You want to feel like an overcomer. You want I to want feel, feel accomplished. accomplished. Want- okay. Done. You want to feel accomplished. So what thought do you need to think to feel accomplished about systems? That they're possible. I mean, I guess I mean, sometimes I'm just like, you know, yeah. I don't want to say it out loud, but I feel like I just can't do this. Like, why is this so hard? You know? Right. Well, and this is what she helped me realize. I've created drama for myself around this whole issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a sapphire. I can't focus. Why is this such an issue for me? I'm getting distracted. Oh my gosh. I've created drama for myself Mm -hmm. when in reality, I am focused This is doable. God has called me to this. I'm living out my purpose and I'm stewarding what he's given me well. Right. So you get to choose your thoughts and your feelings. So that I want, and we'll circle back on this, maybe on Monday night or something, we'll circle back on this, but I want you to take yourself through some thought models and give some real depth and some time to this. What feelings do you want to create? When, what thoughts do you need to think surrounding that? Because that completely changed my paradigm because here I am and here, this is so, isn't it funny? Isn't it curious that this is what our brains do? And this is what the enemy does. Like I'm sitting here thinking, why am I, why do I have focus? Why do I keep getting distracted? Like, yes, I have a to-do list that's a mile long, but I know exactly what I need to do to move the needle forward. So is there a route? Is there this? Is there that? 
do you see? I've just created like this rabbit trail. So I'm running around and I've created drama. I've created all this anxiety for myself because I need to figure it out. And in essence, all I've been doing was trying to avoid the feeling of overwhelm. And wow, this is a lot to do because this, because to me, I know where God is taking us and it's so big and I feel the weight of that. Mm -hmm. But what if I, here's the thing, we get to create how we show up. We get to create the feeling we get to choose. And when uh, Christina used to say this all the time, overwhelm is a choice, right? And I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. But now I really get it. Overwhelm really is a choice because we can, like the homework said, we can indulge those thoughts and we can allow them to stay there. So this really requires us to be very curious, observant, and curious about our thoughts. And I see the chat blowing up. So friends, sometimes it's easier to identify the feelings, maybe not for Leah, but for most of, for the rest of us, it's neither for my daughter either. Leah and my daughter are like the same person, but sometimes we can dig kind of, you're going to have to, to examine because we're trying to avoid or create a feeling in everything we do. So then what would it look like for you to feel accomplished? So you're going to have to think through that and we can do that outside this call, but do you see how the thoughts, it really is right here and we're creating that reality because I really am a very focused, like my life has been changed today. I'm an incredibly focused person. And now that I can choose to show up expectant, like this is the difference. Showing up with overwhelm, um, uh, heaviness in terms of the weight of responsibility and how much there is to do versus I'm going to steward what God has given me well, and I'm going to gain a return that I'm going to lay at his feet. Let me add it. Let me add it. Completely different. So the question is, how do you want to show up? How do you want to feel? So sometimes it can be easier to, you know, work backward that way. Because we get to choose. We get to choose. And that's. Michelle, the- can I, I'm so sorry. Can I oh, just God. jump in real quick? Yeah. Melanie, just based off of what you said, um, I think I I wrote some things down and, you know, I think your thought, if you just said, I am an accomplished leader because you want to feel accomplished. I am an accomplished leader. Therefore, I do systems well. And just taking ownership of that, I think. Because you know what you need to do, right? Yes. So if you tell yourself, I am an accomplished leader, I do systems well each day, maybe you could work from there. Yeah. Or even I'm learning to do systems well. You know, whatever it is, how do you want to show up? Mm -hmm. What is the thought? How do you want to feel in the midst of building your business. I don't want to feel anxious. I don't want to feel overwhelmed. I don't want to feel like I'm striving. I want to work out of purpose, out of intentionality, out of love, out of service, out of leadership, out of, I am an ambassador of the most high God. I'm his daughter and I walk in his favor and authority. Boom. That's how I want to show up. And we're going to change the world. That's how I want to show up. Changes everything. Changes everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would help us as we're walking, going through the week. I would encourage you all as you sit down to do your work. Ask yourself the question, how do I want to show up today? How am I showing? How do I want to feel? Holy Spirit, you are my upline. Show me who I am in you. 
How can I steward what you've given me well? If we were stewarding this well, what would that look like? Because that word stewardship changes everything, doesn't it? It's not about what we're gaining and just about us. It's about loving. It's about purpose. It's about impact. It's about gaining a return. It's about kingdom. It's not even ours. It's his that he's given us to take care of into what's the word I'm looking for. Um, I don't know, just escape me, but to use changes everything. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts, ahas before we dig into the training module number two? I really, really, really hope that you dug into this homework and that you got really honest with yourself because it starts with a realistic view of what's happening, an honest look at what's happening. I just want to say something really quick because I'm about to explode over here. Um, <laughs> but um, I too did it two years ago. And so I have the comparison. And what I did is, um, which was helpful, was seeing like, what were the things that I said I was going to do? Because then you can say, okay, well, why didn't I do it? Because I have the same thoughts, but what was stopping me? And so every time I'm looking at that, I wrote these out, I'm thinking, I wrote, actually wrote my feelings. Like I feel X, Y, and Z. And that is the, and, the, and what happens, the feelings stop you from, or what's hindering me from doing what I already know to do. So thank you so very much. Please like kiss Jessica for us and give her a big hug. And we can all chip in and give you back a dollar or whatever so you can earn your money back. But this is so powerful because that is where we get stuck. All of us here are smart, intelligent, purpose-filled women. But like, what is that stumbling block? And it's like a little pebble that just trips you up on that skateboard. You, you, the whole thing just flies away because we are going. So this is so helpful and such a purposed time for this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Well, you'll pay me back when you hit emerald, sapphire, diamond. Let's just get you all there. That's okay, my we'll do that. I'll buy you a drink on the Honestly, beach. that but that's your legacy. And, and know that as you grow yourself, that's what you're doing for your team too. Like your growth is not just about you. It's for the people that come after you. Like I knew like this for me to take you where I want you to go, like for you to reach your goals, I need to grow. I mean, I'm not saying this to say Michelle's so great, but I had to, like, I had to sacrifice for this class and, and listen, and I'm saying this because I believe so heavily in growth. Like I had to sacrifice financially. I had to sacrifice. I, I sacrificed a lot for this class. And I'm not saying that because I'm so great. I'm saying it because I believe in growth so much and I believe in your potential so much. And as you invest in your own growth, you're not just doing it for you. You're doing it for those that are coming after you, for your children, for your team, for generations. That's what growth does. It's becoming the kind of, it's becoming the leader that people want to follow. That's everything. So, um, so I want to say from to Brittany, you, I want to say to you, thank you for that because we recognize your sacrifice, and that is why we pray, and that is why we say thank you because you are investing to to be a leader is not easy. It's like Moses, right? And so, thank you, thank you, thank you because we are not taking this for granted. So we will do our work, and we will do the work because it's kingdom work, and you're our sister, and our arms are together so thank you thank you thank you wow. you're welcome friend and please hear my heart I wasn't I I appreciate those words Nina I certainly wasn't saying that to say I'm so cool I'm saying it like the model that Brittany has has said like I've just learned so much from her and over and over and over again I've seen her invest in herself and that's why she's one of the most fruitful people that I know and she's able to pour out like she doesn't have to do this podcast She's doing it because she loves us and she wants more for us. She could sit back and drink lattes all day if she wanted to, but she's living out of her purpose, which is to raise up leaders. And it's because she's grown herself. So, 
Oh, I love doing this with you ladies so much. Okay, dig in. If you haven't finished the homework, please take time. And now you know you can't wait till Thursday afternoon to do the homework. So um, module two, I think we're going to go ahead and start that now. Let me share my screen. It is so good. So good. Why? Where's my screen? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, and, and not have to rush through it just for the sake of, you know. Hey, everybody, welcome to module two Oops. of our branding master mind class and tonight we are going to talk about getting to know yourself so we broke this one down into two weeks because the first part of this homework is going to take a pretty good bit of time and so we wanted you guys to have plenty of time and not feel rushed yeah. we definitely want you to get to digest all of the content and not have to rush through it just for the sake of whatever the performance was enchanting, completely we are going to talk about on so many different levels. From the beginning to the end, just what I mean by that I feel is better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. Every American needs to see it. Thank you very much. So I'm hearing a couple things. Yeah, I literally have no idea what's amazing. happening. I, I don't Come even on. know what astounding. I don't. I don't know another word to describe it. Come on. I don't know what's happening. Hold on a sec. Where is this music coming from? And the expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. Oh the men, when they jump, they just popped right off the stage. So athletic. Uh, and so sorry, close. everybody. The ladies, I don't how know they what's moved happening here. Was just they were just floating on air, and that was really special to see. I have no Everyone idea what's happening. Do you guys hear this? Person. I don't and even know where this is I thought from. They executed that one. Yeah. Hear it. We can hear it. Okay, hold on. Let me just shut this browser and then open it up again. That was really bizarre. I'm so sorry. I'm not even going to touch my mouse anymore. Okay. Brand know thyself. be something like I'm doing this business because I want to retire my husband so he can work less and spend more time with his family yeah. let me just rewind okay hey everybody welcome to module two two of our branding mastermind cl class and tonight we are going to talk about getting to know yourself so we broke this one down into two weeks because the first part of this homework is going to take a pretty good bit of time and so we wanted you guys to have plenty of time and not feel rushed we definitely want you to get to digest all of the content and not have to rush through it just for the sake of you know checking off your homework boxes or whatever i want you guys to get the most out of this as possible and be effective so we are going to talk about knowing yourself and what I mean by that is you need to know what your strengths and weaknesses are so that you can learn what value you have to add to people in this business. And we're going to talk first about working from your purpose versus working for an outcome. So you've heard um, us talk a lot about just knowing your why. That's one of the first things you do when you sign up in this business is we tell you, you need to establish your why. It needs to be written. It needs to be clear. It needs to be um, emotionally moving for you. And a lot of times people make their why for why they're doing this business, um, they turn it into like an outcome. And an outcome is fine as long as you're setting that as a goal. But a why is a little deeper than that, a lot deeper than that, actually. Your why is not really attached to an outcome. So an outcome would be something like, I'm doing this business because I want to retire my husband so he can work less and spend more time with his family. Or I want to put my kids in a private school. 
or I want to be a stay at home mom, or I want to pay off debt. Those are all outcomes and they're worthy goals, but a why is attached to your purpose. If you are attaching your why to an outcome, then what is going to happen is when you reach your outcome, then you're going to not have anything else to work toward, right? Or you have to create new um, outcomes that you want to keep working toward, okay? But if you're always working from your purpose and the impact that you wanna make and what you're good at naturally, then you will keep going even after you have reached the, the said outcomes. And um, this applies to the products too. So this is why, honestly, guys, I when it comes to our products, although our products do help people lose weight as a side effect of your body being more balanced, I don't sell weight loss to people because I don't want people to lose 15 pounds and then stop taking their products. I want to focus on long-term health I've been taking these supplements for seven years and I intend to the rest of my life. And that is exactly what I want others to do as well. So I don't want to focus just on outcomes. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on the purpose behind mm -hmm. these products, which is long-term health. All right. Okay. So um, great goals to have, but when you are outcome oriented only without knowing your purpose, then your business is going to run on one of two types of fuel. If you're only focused on your goals or your outcomes, then you're going to either A, work from desperation, or you're going to work from motivation. And let me explain the difference. When you are working from desperation, that looks like hustle lifestyle. It looks like neediness or scarcity and it comes from a place of lack mm -hmm. and the results of working from desperation it's going to look like um, a lack of boundaries mm -hmm. in your business or in your life it's you're not going to stick to your business hours or your family hours that you've designated and you're going to have very high emotional attachment to the outcomes of your activity of your work and it will lead to burnout and it will lead to resentment. So working from a place of desperation is not a good place to be working toward your goals from, okay? If you're working from motivation, that it feels differently. You might feel very excited. You might feel like um, very um, high emotional energy. And it comes from a place of optimism or from dreaming um, and you're like in a high emotional state, but it's triggered by something outside of you, like an event. Like, don't, didn't you all feel that way after Super Saturday training or leaders retreat training? You leave that, that room and you're like, oh, I'm going to charge hell with a water pistol. That's how you feel. Or you could listen to a great podcast or read a good book or listen to a good training. Basically, it's anything outside of you that makes you feel like you can do anything. That's working from a place of motivation. However, your excitement and your enthusiasm can quickly be crushed when you get out there and start doing the work and you face obstacles like rejection or objections or other challenges and disappointments that are gonna happen because they are going to happen, okay? And so the result of working from motivation and relying on your own motivation to keep you going and working towards your goals is you're gonna to begin to wonder if you just don't have what it takes. It's like a false sense of reality because you're not always going to feel motivated, okay? Let's just be frank here. There will be days where you don't feel motivated and you have to keep going. And if, you, if you're on one of those days where you don't feel motivated, then that's when you're gonna start wondering if you have what it takes. Anything you wanna throw in there, Christina? I mean, no, I've been, I've worked from both of these places. Um, <clears throat> neither one is a very sustainable place to work from. I think about when I used to work from desperation. Um, and some of it, I, I didn't think I could help. I was so desperate to change our circumstance that it did fuel me to take some actions. Um, but unfortunately, the actions came across um, very scattered, definitely very, it came across desperate. And I'll never forget, I told Brittany this earlier, when I won my first shopping spree, that was the outcome I had been working toward. 
I was determined to win it. I had gone the year before with Brittany and I was going to win it. And then I won it and realized this did not make me feel the inside happiness I thought it would make me feel. Why? I thought something was wrong with me. I called, we called, me and Brandon called her from Miami. We're like, um, are we supposed to feel some type of way? Because I don't feel some type of way. Like I actually had felt kind of like a fraud. Like I had just killed myself, killed myself out of desperation for this outcome and missed the opportunity to be working from a purpose of helping other people win. I had won this, but not because I was so, you know, all in, all out trying to help all my people win. No, I won it because I was trying to help myself win. And when I won it, it was much less fulfilling than I anticipated it being. Um, and then Diamond felt different. Diamond felt different because my focus had been in the right place. For that entire year, I made a tremendous shift in how I operated. Um, some of you know, I mean, I started saying, listen, what's built in hustle has to always be maintained in hustle. But what's mm -hmm. built in grace can be maintained in grace. And I really mm -hmm. believed it. And it was really hard for me to surrender that thought uh, because I am, I'm a worker. I'm a worker. But I realized that it doesn't, that it's not just the outside actions that matter. What matters is what is fueling that action. Yes, that's so, so good. Chat is blowing up over there. Everybody's loving that story. All right, so if you're working from a place of desperation or motivation, both of those are the wrong types of fuel in the tank, okay? If you're just chasing a paycheck as an outcome, um, or if you're if you're just outcome focused mm -hmm. and not working from a place of purpose, knowing what your purpose is, God-given purpose, we're going to mm -hmm. help you figure that out. But if you're not working from a place of purpose and you're only outcome oriented, then that is a guaranteed emotional roller coaster for you as an entrepreneur. Guaranteed. Okay. So, what is the right fuel tank to work your business from? It's purpose. Mm -hmm. It's your purpose. Like, what is it that God put you here to do? You're not here by accident. Right. So, but everybody's purpose might look different because everybody is unique and has different um, strengths and weaknesses and talents and gifts. So, if you are lacking purpose in your work, then it's going to result in you not feeling happy even after you reach that outcome mm -hmm. that you so desperately wanted mm -hmm. and that you just kept telling yourself, if I just had that then I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. And you get there and you realize it doesn't really make you happy. Mm -hmm. um, this is why senior rubies are not happy making $40,000 a year. This is why emeralds are not happy making a six-figure income. And this is why you'll even see some diamonds who are not happy, even though they make what brain surgeons make and go on all the diamond trips and drive all the diamond cars and get all the recognition, right? They go on all the shopping sprees. Does that bring happiness? Not if you're only working from um, an outcome focus, mm -hmm. but if you're working from purpose, then what it will look like is diamond who shows up week after week after week, even though they've already reached all of their intended outcomes because it's their purpose, mm -hmm. okay? And that is our vision for our team. We yes. want Plexus Freedom Team to be a team full of people who not just make a lot of money because guys, I know that <laughs> I used to hate it when people say, money can't buy happiness, but everybody wants to try it out for themselves. Everybody wants to learn that the hard way. Um, but listen, it is true. Like, and we don't want, we want all y'all make a lot of money. We want six figures. We want seven figure earners on our team. Lots and lots of them because it is possible. Mm -hmm. It is so possible guys. And we want that for you guys, but we don't just want that. Mm -hmm. We want a team full of people who feel fulfilled in what they do and are making an impact and changing lives all around them and they have they can give generously and they can make a huge impact with the money that they're earning because their work yes. has purpose it's not just about a paycheck although the paycheck is a lot of fun paycheck is a lot of fun listen here's the thing this is so funny it's such a distinct um it's so funny when things like this come up in timing but we were looking at our calendar my husband and I and um, we were looking ahead to February. We typically tend to plan things out with a bunch of kids. 
and we got to two weeks from tonight. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I lead a, a Ruby and senior Ruby coaching call every other Thursday night. And then obviously this branding class. And so I get to this that Thursday and I'm writing in the calendar. We also have gymnastics on this night. So I'm just filling in my husband like, hey, you know, he knows Thursday night's like husband heavy lifting night. But he was like, oh, even on that Thursday? And I'm like, yeah, why? And he's like, that's your birthday. Like you're gonna, you're giving up your birthday. And I'm like, dude, this ain't an out. The outcome wasn't when I hit diamond. And no, my, this is my purpose, bro. Like funny, you should say that. Let me tell you what our topic is tonight, but it has to do with the purpose. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to do with, no, it's not about accolades. It's that my purpose, and we're going to get here in a minute, but it, when the, when what you love, when what you're doing intersects with what you love, what comes naturally in a problem that the world needs, mm -hmm. that's your purpose. Guess what I love doing? Teaching. Uh, guess what comes naturally to me? <laughs> I really hope teaching because if y'all are like, man, she's a terrible teacher, then that blows my point. But hopefully teaching comes naturally. And guess what problems people need solved? You guys need to learn the skill set and the mindset necessary to come get what I have. And we want, and listen, I didn't believe it when people used, diamonds used to say, we want all y'all to have what we have. I'm like, mm -hmm, but you do, you over there having it all. Um, but now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, yeah. Listen, we can't stop till all the people, all 114 of y'all have meet, meet, have met whatever your goal is, whatever your outcome is, but we want you to meet that from your purpose mm -hmm. because we know how much more fulfilling it will be when you are, when you, when you're showing up from your purpose, it doesn't feel like a drag. It doesn't feel like, mm -hmm. um, a sacrifice. It feels like a honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so good. I love that. feels like an honor. And I think that everybody would agree you're a fantastic teacher, Christina. Mm -hmm. Okay, so purpose. Your purpose is how you serve others through your work. Um, your work has a purpose. Like, I feel like I'm being redundant here, but I don't know how else to say that. Work is a good thing, guys. Work was around before sin. Like, it was around before the fall. When Adam mm -hmm. and Eve were in the garden, God gave Adam work to do, and it was good. Okay, so your work is how you serve others. That is that is your purpose here on this planet, how your work makes a difference in the life of other people. It's, a, it's like an overflow of whatever your internal mission is, and it's how you are going to use all of your natural strengths and God-given talents to serve other people. Um, and Christina said this. I'll repeat it. Your purpose is the intersection of what you love doing, what comes naturally to you, and a problem that needs solving in the world. Those three things. And once you nail down that your purpose is work that you would actually do for free, and you cannot imagine getting paid for doing that because you love it so much, then you, you would have a pretty good idea of what your purpose is. It doesn't mean that your work is never going to feel like work. Um, because sometimes, I mean, I don't always feel like doing even what my purpose is because again, I'm not always motivated. No human is, but you can still work from a place of doing what you love. Okay. What she said, uh, they sorry. want to repeat the sentence. Here it is. Your purpose is the intersection of what you love doing, comma, what comes naturally to you, comma, if you prefer, and a problem that needs solving in the world. Yes. So, and oh, sorry, again. I was just going to say it's kind of like going to church. You don't always feel like going, but when you go anyway, you're always glad you did. Yeah. That's what and, it feels like to work from purpose. And the good news is, is if, the, if you have no clue, it's okay. You're probably in good company. I did not either until about a year and a half ago. I always knew my purpose was to teach in some form. I mean, I've made people listen to me talk as since I was a little kid, like all my brothers, all my stuffed animals, whatever. But as far as the rest of that, when Brittany would ask me questions like this, I'm telling y'all for a long time, it felt like she was talking about something kind of cuckoo, like I, I need concrete. Okay. She would say, we need to build your belief in this. Or I'm like, like with blocks, you want to build? And she's like, no, not with blocks. So I'm just saying, if it feels a little bit weird, it's okay. I felt the same way. I had no idea how to nail this down either, but we're going to teach you this week, how to nail this down, how to figure this out. It's not foreign and it's not hiding. Your purpose mm -hmm. is not hiding from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right, so there's people out there who struggle with what you are good at and would even happily pay you money to help them with it, okay? Do not assume that your talent and your gifting is not unique. Do not assume, I hear this all the time, do not assume that your life is boring or uninteresting because that is not true. If we need to run a thought model on that, we will. Yep, or don't assume somebody else can do whatever you can do better. Yes. I'm you not the only good teacher out there. There's other people who can teach better than me, but I got something to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is, it's so much easier to identify what outcomes you want for your life. Most people can do that. Most people can figure out, like, they have an idea in their mind of what they want their life to look like. They know what they want their outcomes to be. But figuring out your purpose and your true why, it really takes some deep digging and some homework. Okay, so that is what you're going to do this week. You're going to get to know yourself. That is part A of module um, two. You're going to go and take some personality tests. And you're going to take several different ones. And it is important to take at least three different tests because it's kind of like taking a picture of different parts of an elephant. Mm -hmm. Like one personality test, it might show you a tusk. Another one might show you an ear. Another one might show you a foot. Um, it's important for you to take different types. That way you get a grand picture. Okay. And then you're going to write down strengths and weaknesses that you find from each personality test. And then you're going to go back and highlight the ones that overlap. Okay. Some of this you're going to be very delighted by to learn about yourself. You're going to be like, oh, I didn't know that, but that makes sense. And then some of it you are not going to want to admit. <laughs> and yeah. so your friend is going to have to be like, yeah, that's you. You do that. <laughs> oh, I remember our conversations with our first personality test. I'm like, can you believe the audacity of this test? It is faulty. She's like, it is spot on. Yes. I love taking personality tests and then talking about them with other people. People are interesting to me. I love to see like different things that make people tick and just how we respond in different circumstances. And it's all very interesting to me. And if it's not to you, then do it anyway, because you don't have to be motivated. You just have to do it. All right. So here's the thing. We're giving you guys the, these tests this week because one of the top things that high performers have in common is that they are self-aware. And you'll hear this over and over and over. Um, Christina says she just read that in the life-giving leader too, talking about life-giving leaders are self-aware. I read that recently in an article called uh, Mindset of a CEO, Highest Paid CEOs in America, What They Have in Common. They're all self-aware. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get to know your tendencies, your motivations, your strengths, weaknesses, um, and we're going to give you links to those personality tests. Yes, and also in Life Giving Leader, you know what he said, the other thing that leaders have, they are, they're self-aware, but then they are also self-confident confident because their confidence comes from knowing their purpose. I'm like, I read this book. <laughs> yes, all right, so most of these personality tests are free, but some of them may have a minimal charge. Um, and yes, we do expect you to invest in your business. We do. You know why? Because we always have. And that's why we are where we are at. So if one of them costs 12 bucks or one of them costs 20 bucks, um, take some of the free ones and then be willing to pay if you need to. Okay. Um, and leadership tip. Get to know your team through this exercise. Once you do your personality test, call somebody on your team and discuss their results with them. Read their results. Now, if you have a big team, obviously you can't do this for everybody. But guys, I'm telling you, I cannot even explain how many personality test results I have read about people on my team. You know why? Because I want to know them and I want to be able to communicate with them. And also, you should do this with your spouse. It will definitely help your communication when you realize things about your spouse. That can be scary, especially if you find one like the Enneagram. It'll tell you, oh, you're this type and your husband's that type. Here's how you interact in a relationship with each other. Mind blown. It's almost like they have been watching you. And then you are not so quick to get mad at the other person. You become more compassionate and understanding. All right, so get to know your team through this process. 
if you want to know how to motivate your team, learn how to motivate them by learning who they are and what motivates them. Here's a perfect opportunity for you to do that. Yep. So we'll upload module two's workbook for you for this week. It'll have the links to the personality test and then it'll have places for you to analyze the results. Guys, pro tip, don't answer what you think is the right answer. That's real stupid. Answer your right answer. Answer the truth. Listen, I could go and take all these personality tests and pretend like connections with people are my top gifting, right? Answer the right answer for real. But yeah. don't try to answer the right answer. Like, don't pick what you wish. But like, that's what I would do. <laughs> okay, everybody. I, we are out of time. Two minutes. Sorry about my technical difficulty. We would have been on time. I'm going to upload. They just kind of talk about the tests for the rest of the, the video. I'm going to upload the video, the homework. I hope that you will. I mean, just do do the work, do the work. And I hope you were encouraged. Thanks, everybody. I'm so proud of you for investing in yourself. And we'll see you later. Good night.